Suppose you wanted to do this integral over the following regions. If I wanted to do the integral over this region over here, what I could do is first integrate over y and go from y equal to 0 up to this line over here. So I'll have y equal to 0 over here, and I'll have the equation of the line minus 1 half x plus 1 over here. And that's for some fixed value of x. And that integration is like taking a ray and extending it from here to here. Next, what you could do is you could take that ray and spread it out from here to here. And that's equivalent to integrating from x equal to 0 to x equal to 2. Now, if you wanted to do the integral over this quarter of a circle over here, since you're dealing with a circular region, it would be convenient to use polar coordinates. So you'll have x is equal to r cosine theta, y is equal to r sine theta, <clears throat> and dA is equal to r dr d theta. Then x is going to become r cosine theta, y is going to become r sine theta, and the area element is going to become r dr d theta. And you can do this integral by integrating from r equal to 0 out to r equal to 2. So you'll have r equal to 0 here, and you'll have r equal to 2 over here. And that'll be for some fixed value of theta. And that integration is like taking a ray and extending it from here out to here. Next thing you could do is you could take this ray and you could spread it out from here to here. And that's equivalent to integrating from theta equal to 0 up to theta equal to pi over 2. Then you could combine these r terms, so you'll have an r cubed and you'll have a cosine theta, and you'll have a sine theta, and you'll have dr d theta. So what you end up with is an integral that's pretty easy to do. Now, suppose I wanted to do the integral over this unusual region over here, bounded by these two parabolas and these two hyperbolas. What I could do is first integrate over y, and then go from here up to here. But this curve ends over here, so I'd have to do another integral and go from here up to here. But this curve ends over here, so I'd have to do a third integral and integrate from here over up to here. So if I wanted to do this integral and integrate over y first, I would have to do three separate integrals. And the limits of integration will be the expressions for, for these curves over here. And if I wanted to integrate over x first and go across like this, that wouldn't be that easy either. So this integral looks like it would be a good candidate for UV substitution. Now first, I'd like to discuss some UV substitution theory. You have a formula that tells you that if you have an integral of f of xy over some region r in the xy plane, you can transform that into an integral over, you can transform that into an integral in terms of u and v over a transformed region, r prime, in the uv plane. But in order to use this equation, you need a set of coordinate transforms from uv coordinates to xy coordinates. So if you have that set of transforms, you take this x over here and you replace it by its expression in terms of u and v over here. Then you take the y and you replace it by its expression in terms of u and v over here. And this term here is just the Jacobian of xy with respect to u and v. And when you have a Jacobian, every term in the numerator corresponds to a row in this matrix. So first you have x, so in the first row you'll have partial of x with respect to u, then partial of x with respect to v. Then you have y, so in the second row you're going to have partial of y with respect to u, then the partial of y with respect to v. <coughs> and the bars over here represent the determinant, which is just this times this minus this times this. So these bars represent the determinant of this matrix, but the bars over here in the formula just represent the absolute value of the Jacobian. Now, these coordinate transforms will take a point over here in the UV plane and map it to a point over here in the XY plane. But in order to use this equation, you want the mapping from this region to this region 
could be one to one. And if the mapping is one to one, you can at least in principle invert this, this transform to get u in terms of x and y and v in terms of x and y. So the inverse transform would take a point over here and map it to a point over here. And they would take this entire region over here and map it to a corresponding region r prime in the uv plane. So you want the transform to be one to one. And in general, the transform will be one to one if the Jacobian is not equal to zero and the Jacobian is finite. And when you'd actually use this equation would be if you had an integral over some region r and you wanted to transform that <clears throat> into an integral over a simplified region r prime but you do that transformation at the expense of getting this extra term in the integrand so you might end up making the integrand more complicated although there are some cases when the integrand will actually be easier Now I'd like to make a couple comments about actually solving these problems. In practice, what you usually have is u as a function of x and y, and v as a function of x and y. So it's actually easier to calculate this Jacobian, the Jacobian of uv with respect to x and y. But fortunately, if you just take the reciprocal of that Jacobian, you get the Jacobian you want, which is the one in the formula. So over here, you first have u in the numerator, so you're going to have partial of u with respect to x, then partial of u with respect to y. Then you have v in the numerator, so the next row will be partial of v with respect to x, then partial of v with respect to y. And these bars over here just represent the determinant, so that would, that's just this times this minus this times this. Now, in many UV substitution problems, you're going to have a region that's bounded by two, two pairs of contour curves. And that's the case for the third region that we just looked at. And if you don't know what a contour curve is, a contour curve is just the curve you get when you have a function of x and y and you set that function equal to a constant. For example, if you had f of xy was equal to x squared plus y squared, and you set that function equal to 4, what you end up getting is a circle of radius 2. Then if you took this function and you set it equal to 9, what you would get would be a circle of radius 3. So these two curves together are one pair of contour curves for this particular function. And this inner circle here is an f equal 4 curve, and the outer circle is an f equal to 9 curve. Now we wanted to do this integral over this region over here. So what we can do is we can take this parabola, y equal x squared, and we can divide both sides by x squared, so we'll have y over x squared is equal to 1. Then we can take this parabola, y equal 4x squared, and divide both sides of that by x squared, so we'll have y over x squared is equal to 4. Now what we can do is we can define a function u equal to y over x squared, such that when I set this function equal to 1, I get this curve back, which is just this here. And when I set the function equal to 4, I get this curve back, which is just this curve over here. So these two curves end up being a pair of contour curves for this particular function. And this curve here is u equal to 1 curve, and this curve here is u equal to 4 curve. Now what I can do is I can take this curve here, y equal 1 over x, and write that as x times y is equal to 1. Then I can take this curve over here, Y equal, to two, y equal to 2 over x, and write that as x times y is equal to 2. So now you can just define a function v equal to x times y, such that when you set that function equal to 1, you get this curve back, which is this here. And when you set the function equal to 2, you get this curve back, which is just this curve here. So 
these two hyperbolas together end up being a pair of contour curves for this particular function. And this one here is of equal to one curve, and this one here is of equal to two curve. So you end up getting these two transform equations, and this parabola here is just a u equal to one curve. So this parabola here maps onto this vertical line over here. And this parabola over here is u equal to four curve. So that parabola will map onto this, this vertical line over here, u equal to four. Then this curve over here is a v equal to one curve. So this curve is gonna map onto this horizontal line over here, v equal to one. And this curve here is a v equal to two curve. So this curve will map onto this horizontal line, v equal to two. And another way you could see that is if you were to take any point on this parabola over here and plug it into this equation, you'd get u equal to one back. So every point on this parabola has to land on this vertical line over here. And if I were to take a particular point on this parabola and plug the coordinates into here, of course I'd get u equal to one back. So that point would land somewhere on this line over here. And if I were to take the coordinates of that particular point, then plug them into this equation here, I'd get some value of v back. And that would tell me exactly where on this line that this particular point would be, where this point would map to on this line over here. And the situation is the same for all the other curves. For example, if I would take any point on this curve over here and plug them into and plug the coordinates into here, I get v equal to one back. So all the points on this curve over here have to fall on this horizontal line over here. And if I were to take a particular point on this curve and plug it into here, of course I'd get v equal to one back, so I'd know that particular point would be somewhere along this curve here. And if I were to take the coordinates of that particular point and plug them into here, I'd get some specific value of u, which would tell me exactly where along this line that point would be, like over here, for example. So what ends up happening is these transforms will take this unusual region of this unusual boundary over here and map them to this boundary over here. And they'll take this region over here and map, map it to this region over here. So they end up taking this unusual region here and mapping it to a much simpler region here, which is just a rectangle in the UV plane. Now we wanted to evaluate this integral over that region. So the formula tells us that we have to take the integrand and put it in terms of u and v. But fortunately, x times y is just equal to v. So this term here is just equal to v. And if you were to bother inverting these equations for u and v to get x, as a function of u and v, and y as a function of u and v, and then multiply those two expressions together to get this term in terms of u and v, you just end up with v again. And next we have to evaluate this Jacobian, but we actually have u as a function of x and y and v as a function of x and y, so it's easier to evaluate this Jacobian, the Jacobian of u, v, with respect to x and y. But fortunately, we can just take this Jacobian and take the reciprocal of it and then get the Jacobian we want, which is the one in the formula over here. So this is equal to this. So we want the partial of u with respect to x. So the partial of this with respect to x is going to be minus 2y over x cubed. And you can get that if you take the x square and bottom and bring it to the top. So you'll have y times x to the minus 2 and then just apply the power rule to that, holding y constant, and you get this. Now we want partial of u with respect to y, so we want the partial of this with respect to y, so the x square over here is constant, and the derivative just becomes one over x square. Now we want partial of v with respect to x, 
So we want partial of this with respect to x holding y constant. So that's just going to become that's just going to become y over here. Then we want partial of v with respect to y holding x constant. So that's just going to become x. Now we want to take the determinant of this matrix here, which is just this times this minus this times this. So when I multiply this times this, this x is, will cancel. This x will cancel with one of these x's. So I'll end up getting minus 2y over x squared, which is over here. Then I want minus this times this. So I'm going to have a minus sign. And then this times this will just be y over x squared over here. So this term has a y over x squared in it, and this term has a y over x squared in it. So what I can do is factor out the y over x squared over here, and I'm left with minus 2 minus 1. So this becomes minus 3 y over x squared. So now we want to take the reciprocal of that. So we're going to have 1 over that, which is 1 over minus 3 y over x squared. But conveniently, the y over x squared is just going to be equal to u. So this denominator here becomes minus 3 times u. So you have 1 over minus 3 times u, which is the same as minus 1 over 3u. So x times y was equal to v. Next, we need the absolute value of the Jacobian, which is just the absolute value of this. So we have this term over here. And of course, the integral is with respect to u and v. So now we can bring down the v over here. And the absolute value of minus 1 over 3u is just 1 over 3u. And that's because this u over here is always, con is always positive, since the u only varies from 1 to 4. So this term is always positive. So at this point, you can see that the integrand that you end up with after doing the transform is just slightly more complicated than the original integrand. But this region r prime is much simpler than the original region. So now we have this constant 3 in the denominator. So we can bring out a factor of 1 third. And this v over here is constant with respect to the u integration. So we can bring the v outside of this integral. So we'll get this over here. And on the inside, we have this integral of 1 over u du. But this integral is a constant since the integrand is only in terms of u. And the limits here are a constant. So we can take this integral and bring it outside the v integration. So the whole thing will become this. Now what you can do is you can bring down the 1 third again. You can integrate this using the power rule. So this will just become v square over 2, or 1 half v square. And that will go from 1 to 2. So we have 1 here and 2 here. Then this integral here, integral of 1 over u du, is just equal to the natural log of u. And that's from 1 to 4. So we have 1 here and 4 here. Now we can bring down the 1 third again. And we have to evaluate the v square at the upper limit minus the v square at the lower limit. So we're going to have 2 square, which is 4 over here. And that's going to be minus 1 square, which is 1. That's v square evaluated at 1 is just 1. And next, we're going to have natural log of u evaluated, evaluated at 4, which is natural log of 4. And that's going to be minus natural log of natural log of u evaluated at one. So we'll have minus natural log of natural log of one. But the natural log of one is just equal to zero. Now we can bring down the one third again. The four minus one over here is just equal to three. So in these brackets, we'll have three halves over here. And we can take the natural log of 4, and we can write 4, we can write 4 as 2 square. So we'll have natural logarithm of 2 square. And of course, this term here is just equal to 0. So this 3 will cancel with this 3. So these two terms just end up being 1 half. 
then you can take this exponent of 2 and bring it down, since that's just a property of logs. So this term here will become 2 times natural log of 2, and this 2 will cancel with this 2, so the final answer will just be natural log of 2.